Have you ever thought about how much you need to retire? Do you know your magic number? As an immigrant who practically started over in a new country when I was over 30, this is something that I have thought about extensively. The challenges of building from scratch have given me a unique perspective to this question of retiring comfortably. This video is divided into three parts. And in each part, we will try to answer the following questions that will help us know how much we need to retire. The first part speaks to the fact that there is no definite answers to this question. The second part answers the question, what is enough for retirement? And the last part, which is the most important in my opinion, talks about the role of flexibility in the journey as a whole. Let's dive in. You might be asking, why do I say there are no answers? When this video is meant to give the answer to that question, you might also be thinking, surely people like Elon Musk and Bill Gates have enough to retire, right? So they know the answer. Let's start with the second thoughts. Many of us will never have the kind of money that Elon Musk has. That's the reality. In fact, a stat even shows that today the average pot of a 55 to 64 year old living in the UK is just 107,000 pounds. Now to the first thought, the reason I say there are no answers is simply because no one knows exactly what would happen in the future. And the further you are from retiring, the more unclear the future economic and political landscape will be. No one knows what will happen with things like inflation, the stock market, what kind of support you will need at that time, how long you would even live and something as simple as what the tax laws would be at that time. There are so many factors in the future that we don't know and we can't control. That's why I say that there are no answers to this question. But that doesn't mean that we won't do anything or we will do all the wrong things. That wouldn't be wise. Instead, we look at what the past can teach us, learn the lessons and use that to prepare for the future. With this understanding, let's go to the second part of this video where we'll discuss what is enough. In my opinion, you can define enough as having sufficient resources to take care of your expenses. These resources could be assets in the stock market, passive income from businesses that you have equity in, or something like rental property and the likes. Being in this position gives you the opportunity to say that word, I am retired, simply because you don't have to work for money again. But the exact number will be different for each of us. So how do you know what's your exact number? The most popular way to determine how much is enough came from an excellent research paper by a financial advisor called Bill Bangen, who established the 4% rule as a tool for gauging what is enough for retirement. This research analyzed historical stock market data and it determined that if you are retiring for a period of 30 years, every year you can withdraw 4% of your retirement balance without ever running out of money. For those that might ask, yes, this research accounted for inflation and even in the worst case scenario, the research says that it's still sustainable as long as your portfolio was made up of 50% stocks and 50% bond. So going by this rule, if you desire an income of let's say £20,000 a year at retirement, you either divide 20000 by 4% or you multiply 20000 by 25. Either way, you get £500,000. And that means if you want 40000 you would need a million. I like this rule because in the face of all the uncertainty that we mentioned earlier, it gives us a simple figure that we can use as a goal to guide us. So how do you get your own number? I'll show us how to do this by using an example. Let's say a couple, Steve and Amanda, aged 35 and 32, want to retire at 65 and they want to live on 3,000 pounds monthly. In a year, that will come up to 36,000 pounds. Using today's situation, if they are to retire today, and qualify for the full UK state pension, they would have £11,500 each. As a side note, there is actually a big argument if the state pension will be available for someone like Steve and Amanda in another year's time when they will be eligible to have access to it. 
Personally, I'm assuming that there will be no state mention at that time for many reasons that I can't start talking about now. But if I do get it after this my assumption and I'm wrong, it's going to be a plus. But I'm not factoring that in to my retirement planning as of today. And that is just for the side. For this illustration, we will use the situation as of today. And today, we have the state pension. And if we take out what Steve and Amanda will get in the state pension, there is a gap of £13,000 in a year. You multiply that by 25 and Steve and Amanda needs £325,000 today in today's money to retire. Let's say Steve currently has a defined contribution pension pot of 57000 and Amanda has 20000 in her pot. That means they need an extra £248,000 and they need to save £344 each month to retire to be able to meet that target at 65. Now, not to complicate things any further, remember taxes and inflation would also affect this final figure. But if you're investing in a global ETF or an ETF like the S&P 500, that should handle the inflation problem because it will grow above inflation. For example, Steve and Amanda's 325k adjusted for inflation is over 7 180,000 pounds. But if they invested the 688 monthly contribution in a global world diversified fund with an average return of 6% yearly, at retirement they would have 1.1 million plus. They have over 350,000 pounds by investing. That's why I preach so much about investing. It is just too powerful for any of us to actually ignore. And if you're new to investing, you can check out my playlist in the description to show you all you need to do to get started today. With tax, it's dependent on the vehicle you use to prepare for retirement. For example, with pensions, you will be taxed at the point of withdrawal. But with an ISA, you won't be taxed if you invested within the limit, which as of today is £20,000 per year. So keep that in mind while working on your own numbers. If this has been helpful so far, please do me a favor, the like button, it will help get this video to more people and that helps the channel a lot. Thank you. The last part of this video talks about flexibility and this is the most important part in my opinion because there are different scenarios and options that are available to us. And while the 4% rule gives us a large number and a goal to aim for, we can introduce options which brings flexibility depending on your preference and situation. I'll throw in a couple of scenarios to give us an idea of what I mean. So we don't look at this big number and say this is too big a mountain for us to come. I'll use the case of Amanda and Steve as usual. So using the 4% rule, they will need £900,000 to retire. There could be options that reduce this amount. For example, if they are a homeowner at the time of retirement and have no mortgage, that means that they have reduced costs, which brings down the overall investment number. Because if you remember, the investment number is derived from your yearly expenses. They could also downsize or move to a cheaper country. For example, Portugal is pop popular these days. These options are also applicable if you decide and say, okay, I don't want to wait till 65, I want to retire at 55. All of these are scenarios that you would have to play out. And while that goal gives us a good target to aim for, like in the case of Steve Amanda, which is 900,000, that number is not fixed. You can be flexible, you can move things around to accommodate life as it happens. But while you're on the journey, just like Steve and Amanda, there are some things that you need to focus on, things that are within your control. Things like one, start investing with what you have today. Make sure you stretch yourself. You don't have to wait till tomorrow. Don't procrastinate. Start today. Check out our playlist if you don't know what to start. Invest aggressively. I would say 100% stocks if your investment horizon is over 10 years time. And But that's my opinion. And lastly, use tax advantage accounts. I can't stress this enough. Accounts like ISA, LISA, pensions, these accounts are meant to give you an advantage and a boost. I hope this helps you. And if it's yes, please subscribe to the channel 
if you haven't. And also don't forget to check out our investing playlist and other videos that we have. See you in the next one.